Hey everyone, welcome back to the battle to prevent Alzheimer's. We wanna talk about Chris Hemsworth's recent uh, announcement of his discovery of having uh, genes that are telling him that he may be in the future uh, a higher risk for Alzheimer's. And uh, this came out on his show Limitless, which is now bringing up conversation around Alzheimer's and what we can do about it. Yeah, I know my kids actually came to me after that. They, they heard about this and they said to me, look, you need to make sure you talk about Alzheimer's because, it's, you know, Chris Hemsworth has come out and said how important it is and what happened to him. And I thought, let's just have a little talk about this. I think it's a great way to kind of bring to everyone's attention the importance of testing. Yes. And, and that's what happened to Chris Hemsworth. Is, uh, basically for the show, he had to get testing done to kind of see, you know, his what's going to impact um, how long he's going to live. And Alzheimer's is one of those conditions that really can shorten someone's life. I mean, it does, yeah. happen. It does happen when you get older, but it's one of the ma major causes of disease, of dying. And, uh, uh, and I think he was, you know, did, did, he, did, he, did he know in advance that he was being tested for Alzheimer's or was it just there and they said, oh, uh, oh my gosh, you have it. Or did he already know that he was going to be tested for it? No, I'm pretty sure they have to, you have to know that you're being you tested know. for it okay. because it's a very specific type of genetic marker that they're looking for. Okay. And, uh, and then coming back to our previous episodes, you know, it's really about this APOE allele, this APOE gene. Right. That uh, he has two copies of the APOE4 allele. Okay. Uh, which puts him at, you know, 10 times the risk of an average person. Yeah, so, so significantly uh, much higher risk even than myself who has if you could remember one ApoE4 allele. Okay. One and he has two. Yeah. So that's two. that's making it even more. Which is um but it's not, it's like mine's it's not just double it's almost five times the risk of somebody who's just got one copy and 10 times the risk of somebody who's got like a neutral, which is three and three. Now, I, I, I probably should have researched how old Chris Hemsworth is, uh, 30s, 40s? Yeah, maybe? I think he's probably in his 30s, yeah. Um, yeah, because he's still young. I Would, does, does that mean he was born with those genes? Like, is there any altering way? Like, if we tested a baby, would we know already that this child yeah. had this gene? Exactly. Okay. You can test at any age, and, and basically you inherit your, your genes from your parents. And so in Chris's case, he inherited one E4 allele from each parent. Wow. So we okay. each carry two Thanks, alleles. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> <laughs> we each carry two alleles, and we pass one down. We pass one of them to your children. So did Right. And so now, as a medical doctor and as someone who receives this kind of information, we're talking about prevention. Obviously, our genetics, there's nothing we can do about that. Unless maybe they can remove it down the road in the future. What is your diagnosis or recommendation now for somebody who discovers they're at a much higher risk for this probably happening in the future? What's next? Uh, well, it's it's, comp it's it's a bit complex. I mean, we don't have a treatment per se, but I think I we did talk about a medication that's come out just they just approved in the U.S., which decreases amyloid beta. Okay. Because we think that Alzheimer's is caused by an accumulation of this amyloid within the cells. Okay. And these tau called tau tangles. Um, so basically, these proteins build up in the cell mm -hmm. and eventually cause the cell to die, the neurons to die. And then this medication does something well, it tends to prevent to that. Yeah, and it tends to reduce the, the buildup of this type of molecule in, in, the, in the neuron. But the issue is, uh, I mean, first of all, yeah, this medication is new and we don't exactly know how well it's gonna work, but, mm -hmm. but, but. But for someone like him, who's not in active, um, you know, have, showing active signs, mm -hmm. you wouldn't give somebody a medication for that, is that correct? Oh, sorry. Per se, <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, yeah, so you'd have to you'd have to basically it's it's not so simple to get this medication. It's only available in the U.S. It's being given to only people who have, uh, you know, aggressive, a, a aggressive. Yeah, for sure, they have the diagnosis of Alzheimer's. So, and okay. a person who is just has a risk and has no signs and no symptoms, they're not given this medication yet. So, uh, to make to answer your question, but what would one do now? What is Chris doing right now? Yeah, he's what probably, is he doing? No, probably, hearing about this. You know, he's he's just working on making sure, like keeping your your cholesterol in a good good range, you know, because we think that um, blood flow is also um, central to uh, brain problems. If, 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 you're, if blood flow starts to decrease, then that can cause further issues with, with, with the neurons, uh, as well as sugar. 
Okay. So, um, all so there, is, so there is a rela there's a relationship yes. between your diet yes. and brain function. Exactly. I mean, we know that when we take certain substances, it'll fog our brain, right? Like, exactly. if we're drinking, we have different like we have what we call impairment, right? So, do, knowing that somebody has that, would you say? And I don't know if it's true or not. Like, just avoid those kinds of things completely. Moderation. Well, I mean, once you have the best diet possible, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Alzheimer's is called type three diabetes. So, we should not overdo it with regards to sugars and and so on. We have to keep a healthy weight, keep exercise. All of these things are very important for people who are at risk of Alzheimer's and also uh, brain injuries. Okay. So we want to avoid any type of. Um, brain uh injuries concussions, concussions like if you let, let, let's say that you are participating in a contact sport or you're an mma fighter like you'd probably say yeah. you may want to give that up yeah i mean there's definitely people who have the apoe4 gene are at a higher risk of uh of getting alzheimer's if they have um, brain injuries Okay. Do you have a recommendation for when someone should take a test? Can they take it at the age of 30, at 20? Like, is yeah, it just I out of curiosity if you want to know? I think if you have anybody in your family has has who has had Alzheimer's, um, you know, before, let's say, you know, 80. Okay. Then one should definitely get it done, test, get tested to find out what your risk is. Um, yeah, I, I would say there's never, never too early to know. It's a question of that. Uh, whether you want to know, whether, but I think that in today's world, it's not a de know. it's not a death sentence. You want to know, and that's right. what the whole point of our series is. That we want you to already start thinking that hey, um, it's better to know be, and take action now. Is what mm -hmm. Chris is saying. I was just reading his article, and he was saying, look, you know what? It actually put things to perspective, and he wants to go and spend time with his family and make sure that he's enjoying today. Right. Because. Because yep. even if it's long time from now, as you can see, and hopefully in, in other episodes, we'll talk more about, uh, you know, those people and the impact and their, like, how they're impaired and all of those things. Um, can we bring up very quickly the fact that another celebrity just got diagnosed with frontal lobe dementia? Is that, Am I saying that correctly? Yeah, or? frontal temporal uh, dementia. Okay. Uh, with Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Yeah, he just... just came and... Out. He's actually, what they're saying is that they suspected something and while he was shooting a project, the producers even had to modify his work because they realized he wasn't able to retain some of the words and his speech is now being impaired because of the particular kind that you were saying. Yeah, his, it, it's exactly, it's, it's called frontotemporal dementia and it, and it looks like it affects primarily the, the speech and language area. That's how they, they noticed it with him. Um, not related to Alzheimer's, it appears to be a genetic, ah. primarily a genetic disorder, so not related to, you know, head injuries or so on and so forth that we know. So did, did, do you know if they would have tested, like, would he have the APOE4? No, it's probably completely different. Completely different. Yeah. So, so is there any way to, to prevent something like that? Uh, I don't think we have an answer for that right now. Okay. They're, hopefully they're working on some answer for <laughs> frontal temporal <laughs> dementia. I'm sure he would want that. Yeah. Uh, so dementia is different than Alzheimer's then. Is there a distinction or is it like, what do you, what yeah, is so the dementia definition? just means you know, uh, problems with the brain. cognitive function. Okay. okay. And there are many different causes of which Alzheimer's is, you know, is the specific. largest cause. Okay. Yeah, the I did read that. most common cause of 60 dementia. to 80% of, of dementia is through Alzheimer's. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, can we tell people where they can get a test? Where can they get one? Or well, yeah, most of the DNA, comp most of the DNA, genetic uh, DNA companies offer the APOE4 testing so you could have that uh, done primarily everywhere um, okay and I did mention I think on a previous yeah we'll uh, put the link yeah. to watch the previous episode yeah, where yeah, we where talked, we yeah. talked about the, the more comprehensive test exactly the pr more comprehensive test it looks at over a hundred different genes and, and develops a poly risk score polygenic yes. risk score uh, based on your Alzheimer's on Alzheimer's risk Great. All right. So next week we are going to specifically talk about how Alzheimer's impacts the brain. So stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll put all the links and how you can get uh, more support and more information in this video.
See you next week. Take care.